Hi, welcome to this series where I'm going through the ITIL 4 practices individually and I'm giving you the headline points you need to be aware of in order to help support your base knowledge around ITIL 4. I'll also discuss, discuss some of my real world examples and real world application of the various practices in the organisations I've worked in. Don't forget, subscribe to my channel and click the bell to get those updates. Okay, so let's get to it. Today I'm going to be covering off IT asset management from the service management practice. There's 17 of those practices in the service management practice and I've got videos covering each one of those. Today I'm just covering IT asset management. Reminder, a practice is a set of organisational resources designed for performing work or accomplishing an objective. So IT asset management first of all, is a service management practice. Asset management in itself is not actually a new thing, and it, in, it includes things like getting it somehow, getting the asset in the first place, acquiring it, then operating it, running it, caring, looking after it, and then, unfortunately, at some point, getting rid of it, disposing it, retiring it. It's worth knowing IT asset management's a subset practice of asset management with a headline focus around cycle management, cost management, so the, the total cost of ownership, the TCO, in terms of IT stuff and infrastructure parts. Software management, so software asset management, SAM, is what you might imagine. It's about managing, getting the software in the first place, developing it, releasing it, deploying it, uh, maintaining it, and, and like most things, eventually retiring it. SAM, Software Asset Management, gives you good management practice, good control practice, good protection of the software as well. That's really important if you want to avoid getting into trouble. ITIL 4 advises the purpose of IT asset management is to plan and manage the full life cycle of an asset, an IT asset, to help the organisation with a bunch of things. And those, those items are about maximising value, controlling the costs, managing the risk. It helps support decision making about the purchase, the reuse, the retirement, and the eventual disposal, the eventual retirement of, of that asset, as well as meeting regulatory or contractual requirements. I've worked in a number of projects over the last five or six years that IT asset management and asset management has been part of a European regulatory requirement, but also contractual requirement. I'll, I'll talk about that as, as we go on. In terms of what's included, so read scope, think software, think hardware, think networking, think cloud services, client devices. So those are the, the, the kind of areas. Hardware, for example, I'll just pick one out there. So hardware, from my experience, it's been items like laptops, it's been desktops, local printers, tablets, monitors, phones, desk phones and mobile devices, routing devices, security devices, firewalls, network accelerators, I think there were some load balancers from, from memory, data center racks, blades, compute storage, the, the list goes on, UPS, printers. Uh, I also remember there, were, there was quite a complex element in terms of the hardware around MFDs, multifunctional devices. So there was a lot of uh, large uh, multifunctional printer scanner type devices in different continents all, all not being totally captured by the by the uh, the asset management process but also think scanners think cctv monitoring devices a ac devices as well but the definition of an it asset which is worth memorizing is any financially valuable component that can contribute to the delivery of an IT product or service. So it's really important to, to manage assets 
ultimately how can you how can you manage how can you support how can you run operationally if you don't know what you have and you don't know where it is you, you're on a hiding to nowhere so asset management it asset management allows financial and purchasing decisions it helps we've mentioned about regulatory requirements it understands also it helps in understanding how's everything linking together how's it all connected it's as i say asset management it's not a new thing but it's been around for many many years questions to ask is where is it what is it why am i paying for it and quite often in some larger organizations where um, assets are where there's charging structures um whose budgets are actually coming out of and i've definitely seen a um a huge increase in terms of accuracy of it asset management and asset management generally when it suddenly comes down to department budgets your your department has x number of laptops and we're charging you x amount of money for those laptops there's a lot of focus and a lot of energy suddenly goes into the accuracy of asset management if there's a cost associated to it and it's coming out of your your budget i've also been in situations where um we've managed to save organizations tens of thousands of pounds just by looking at the licensing and looking at the consolidation of um if you're being charged uh per license for a an expensive piece of software you absolutely need to be checking that all the people on that list still work for that organization not only from a security perspective but from a charging perspective and i've saved organizations quite a lot of money just looking at the the asset side of things in terms of software licensing so as we go on into the ITIL4 world, it, it's recognised now as a, as a critical practice within service management. I, I like to think of it in terms of it's looking at the purpose of it. It's the, what is the benefit of it? What's the value? Where are the risks? What are the risks um, that that might bring to an organisation? Also things like depreciation, are, are items written off? over a particular period of time perhaps it's three years perhaps it's five years you need that information from your asset uh, register as uh, as to how old is this equipment so certainly i've been heavily involved in financial reconciliation around it assets and does it does it meet compliance um and uh, you, you know there may be some kind of regulatory or compliance uh, requirement a few years ago i think it was three, four, five years ago, I was involved in a, a European project where this was right at the centre of, uh, uh, of making sure that there was a compliance tick and the compliance view on life was okay in terms of the assets. Fundamentally, where are the assets? Do we actually know uh, where they are in terms of which, even to extent, which continent are, are, are they actually in? So IT asset management, there's different types and it can be really broad and it can be really wide. And I spoke about some examples of hardware assets. But in my experience, from a, from a real world perspective and being out in lots of organisations, um, definitely the hardware and the software point um, is there, but also increasingly the cloud services and, and your information, your, your data. So um, IIS... PA, uh, uh, sorry, I, infrastructure as a service, platform as a service, and software as a service. Think along those lines, but also think about where is the information? Where is that information stored? And is it okay for it to be stored there? Perhaps there is a regulatory or a compliance element that says it needs to be uh, stored near side or you know, it's not allowed to be available in a particular country. But really kind of think around that the, the assets as not only physical bits of kit or software, which I think the tendency does tend to be, think in a wider context of, well, it's your data, it's your information as well, and physical location of, of that. Where is it? Perhaps it's spanning multiple continents. Hardware devices are much easier. So to me, my experience has been around laptops, desktops, um, local printers, 
mobile uh, sort of flat screen devices, tablets, phones increasingly as well around um, uh, mobile phones, less so around desk phones recently. But think about your data center, the blades, the compute, the storage, UPS devices, maybe even CCTV or monitoring or air conditioning devices, software. So think server and client base OS, think office productivity software, think licensing, think VMs. Um, watch out for those one-off purchases of software for a particular person uh, in a particular department. Especially watch out for shadow IT where people are buying software and installing it and, and using it perhaps under the radar. It's really important to, to tease that out if you, if you want to avoid getting into trouble. Your ITSM tool should have a module or some ability to be able to track assets as well and, and uh, have a, an asset register in there. So you can show that to management and uh, it can produce management reporting and it, it can provide tracking of assets. Think workflow, think process. So for example, when somebody joins your organization for the first time, how you recording more to the point how are you accurately reporting and recording the asset change of ownership are you going out and buying a new piece of equipment are you going out and buying a new laptop for the sake of argument or are you using an existing laptop that's in storage in the basement or someone else it's somebody else's laptop and that person is leaving on the same day so you're reassigning it fine but just think about your provisioning process make sure that your asset register reflects if Mark is leaving an organisation and John is joining the organisation, you definitely want to make sure that A, you've got that decommissioning activity, that deprovisioning process going on of Mark is now leaving, make sure we get the laptop back, but also make sure that the asset register and the data reflects that, that Mark has now left and is not the owner of asset 12345, John, the new person who's joining, now is the owner of that. So it's really important just to think through your provisioning and your deprovisioning elements of that. You don't want to be reporting that, oh yeah, Mark, has, Mark owns a laptop um, and um, actually, no, I, I left 12 months ago um, and to, you know, kind of get, get in the, the, those kind of situations. But your, your ITSM tools should be able, a, able to help here. Then if we talk about the, the various activities um, relating to IT asset management, and it does depend on the type of asset in question. So the, the, there's some fundamental elements here though. Consider identification of the asset, thinking about defining it, how do you populate it in your asset register, protection, we talked about that in terms of software. So as an example, let, let's just check the contracted number of users for a, uh, a, an organization is in line with the license that you have for it. If you've got 100 people using a piece of software, do you have 100 licenses? Or perhaps it's a concurrent license or, or maybe some other kind of license, but just are, are the number of licenses correct for the number of people that, that are using it? It all helps. Um, avoid getting yourself in, in trouble. Cloud services. So maybe think about whatever that service is that you're operating, is it clear who that's assigned to? Is it relevant to the specific group? Is it Has it been assigned to a department or, or an individual in some cases? Talking of individual, don't forget individual ownership. So we talked about the example of myself, for example, leaving an organisation. The asset is in my name at the moment, but when I leave, it needs to be decommissioned from me, deassigned and assigned to the new person. That goes for things like laptops, for desk phones, for mobile phones, monitors. So if it's assigned to me as asset 12345 for, um, uh, for, a, for a laptop, when I depart and hand that laptop over to another to the incoming person 
let's just make sure that that individual ownership element is is um, a sign you can probably tell I, I have experience of this and it, it doesn't always work as, as you might imagine and then you can the asset needs to be controlled in terms of its overall life cycle eventually down to the decommissioning and, and retirement think also about how do other practices interface into the IT asset management practice. Really good example is what happens if it needs to be upgraded? So that there's gonna be other practices that you're gonna have deployment in there. You, that there's gonna be a release. There's, there's lots of other bits that kind of touch that that, um, that that you need to consider. Also, it's a good idea to have an activity that looks at the integrity of the data that you maintain so auditing uh, do you do regular qa activities at its most basic sense do you randomly pick on some records and then say okay well this person should own laptop one two three four five phone five six seven eight and a monitor nine ten eleven twelve do is that actually checked? Are, are, are there QA activities there to, to, to make sure? And then reporting as well. So it's it's really helpful to, to get some of that reporting information out there. So we have X number of assets in X location or perhaps X number of um, assets that are X number of years old. Thinking that through, just slight aside, in the real world here, I've used that as the formation of a business case to launch a, a, a global laptop refresh project which basically the, the, the crux of it was showing look data from the asset management tool from the from the IT asset management tool shows we've got x number of laptops it was thousands of laptops that are um, five years old and then I correlated that back to the service desk function and the number of incidents and sure enough you it, it was it was plain as day you could see this old kit was causing all sorts of problems in in different regions i think it was apac in in particular um and and some emea um the, there was a real kind of element that said the kit is just old it's struggling to run applications it's it, it's breaking down it and the amount of incidents that were were related to um uh, to, to these areas it, it, it was crystal clear so clearly that's impacting productivity of people so your asset management tool can be a really powerful tool in terms of it assets and as i say i launched a business case off the back of that and it was driven around we can improve the productivity of people and then um configuration management systems so Data about your assets is often shared with the CMS. Um, I have to say, some of my real world experience, unfortunately, those those have been separated. Uh, that they, they've not been talking to each other as as well as they could, which which is not great. Try to map these two together. Um, it, it, try and keep everything consistent. So naming conventions is probably the obvious point there in in terms of if you've got two separate systems you are you're on a hiding to nowhere because there's too much manual um, uh, uh, activities and you, you're never going to keep them keep them in sync if they are separate try and map them but the, the key think about the names think about the ids um, otherwise you're on a sure recipe for, for mass confusion and then finally, let's just look at the service value chain for IT asset management. Remember, the service value system has the service value chain right at the center of it. I always like to remember it as PIDOD. So plan, improve, engage, design and transition, obtain and build, deliver and support. That will deliver your product and that will deliver your service, which will provide value. So in terms of IT asset management, the, the main emphasis is around design and transition and also the obtaining, the obtain and build part. Okay, that's it. Thank you very much for listening. I will continue to provide updates and upload videos on the practices and various other elements of ITIL4. 
please do subscribe Pre please like the video um, and uh, um, hit the bell to get those updates thank you